Jumbo! Oh, I'm not in Kenya anymore. Okay. Hello. Um, can we ever use bro science and turn it into science? Of course. So you have obviously, and it stands to reason, a, a whole cohort of guys going, hey man, that's bro science. You know, you don't listen to that crap. Um, but we should listen to it. We should critically analyze it and see if there is potential to turn that bro science into science. Thinking, always thinking. Um, lots of information, positive information can come from bro science. So you shouldn't discount it, but you should take it, analyze it, and see if there's some validity to it. Why am I talking about bro science? Uh, because we were accused of stacking HCG uh, in our guise uh, by a very well respected endocrinologist. Stacking, they're stacking, you know. It's dodgy, it's bro science. Well, garbage. Stacking is a term used in bodybuilding where you add one or more compounds together to have a specific androgenic and anabolic effect that you would not get from using a single compound. The use of HCG alongside testosterone replacement therapy is to mitigate the side effects of testosterone monotherapy. Now we know that testosterone monotherapy suppresses the pituitary and so you do not send luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone down to the testes to hopefully produce testosterone and semen. So what did those bros do? Well during their anabolic steroid cycles they used HCG alongside the various compounds that they used to prevent testicular failure, ergo preventing infertility. And hopefully when they come off cycle, then the pituitary can actually stimulate functioning testicles. So the bros, the bros came up with this idea of using HCG alongside testosterone. Now, why, why did they come up with this idea? Well, because HCG is used in male infertility. My God, the sun's coming up. It's all getting a bit bizarre. Um, okay, I'm just going to hold my hand there. So, they used... Um, HCG in male infertility. So the bros took that idea and said, we're going to use that. And uh, yeah, obviously they, they've continued to use it. But it's not stacking. There's, 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 a, there's a very distinct, there's a distinction between stacking and using a compound to mitigate, counteract potential side effects of a therapy. Now we do use medication in traditional medicine to mitigate the side effects of a particular drug. In fact, we do it all the time. So the use of HCG alongside testosterone replacement therapy is to do exactly that. Again, why am I talking about that today? Well, I'm talking about that today because we received an email from one of our guys, number 18, <coughs> We have had 18 pregnancies using HCG alongside testosterone. So it makes sense. There is evidence to support the use of HCG alongside testosterone monotherapy to help preserve fertility. And there are the other obvious health benefits from having HCG alongside testosterone which I won't go on about because I've been on about them ad nauseum before. 
So what would happen if you went to the doctors, uh, and I mean an NHS doctor, requesting uh, HCG? You can't have it because the use of HCG alongside testosterone is bro science. Well, it's not. So the NHS needs to wake up. So we have guys, uh, this, is, this is obviously not our guys, um, that have presented to us, uh, have been on testosterone monotherapy. They've been to their doctor, both uh, GP and endocrinologist, and said, I want to retain fertility. Can I go on HCG? And the answer is always, and I mean always, no. Now we know, as I said a few minutes ago, that testosterone causes uh, infertility through azoospermia. Now, surely that's causing harm if you are not mitigating the side effects by giving a therapy that we know works. I find that quite disturbing. So what do the GPs and endocrinologists suggest if a person on testosterone monotherapy wants to have children? They suggest that you come off therapy and you go on to HCG monotherapy. There's a bizarre logic in that, but I mean, it's a bizarre logic. So, can we use bro science and make it science? And the answer to that question is yes. So another question is, well, a statement actually, we should always practice evidence-based medicine and we should change our practice based on that evidence. In principle, that is true. In practice, that is not always true because it depends on the validity of that evidence. A new study with 25 people states, duh, 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 duh. that's not good enough. Um, you can't draw long term data or long term assumptions from a two year study. Doesn't make sense. Two years is long term. Perhaps to a dog, so it's 14 years, isn't it? But not to a human, it's only two years. Flies by. So you have to utilise common sense. And there seems to be a lack of common sense, not only within traditional medicine, but also within the private sector. And I think the private sector is a rather peculiar place. Now, I, I went into private medicine because... I was disillusioned with the NHS and the care I was delivering. And, I, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a model I wanted to be a part of. And I thought I could do something different, something better, to have something have more of an impact. So private healthcare meant that I didn't have to go by the uh, manufacturing guidelines for the use of nabido, sostenon, cipionate, elanthate. Um, I could use common sense. As long as I did it safely and effectively, wonderful. And obviously we've gained a very good reputation because we have had positive effects. But it's always been done safely and effectively. So, private healthcare, it allows you to practice in the best interests of your patient. Now that's not to say there's not money involved because my, t my time is valuable. So obviously you know, there is a fee and we're fully transparent about those fees and we will continue to be fully transparent about those fees. Um, there are no hidden costs at the Men's Health Clinic. But in private medicine, how do you make a name for yourself? You shout loud. You make bold statements. You should never use an AI. You should always use an AI. You should always have this. You should always do this. 
This is what we're doing. What you should do is apply common sense and not try and make a name for yourself by making bold closed statements because a good scientist does not make bold closed statements because science is ever evolving. So there are lots of private clinics out there um, who make false promises, who make these bold statements and it's just foolish. Um, so we will never do that. I hope we'll never do that. Um, so I'm absolutely thrilled for my guy, as always, because we have a close working relationship with all of our patients and we will keep it that way. So you ready? Peace out.